Before you watch this video, quick disclaimer, I started filming this back in June of 2020. It is now January of 2021 and I completely put this off for like seven months, obviously. Just keep in mind that I was kind of a different person then, but there is still some useful information, I guess, in this video. So um, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Let me take you guys on a journey. I've been stuck at home in quarantine for a couple months now, and I was going through old photos and thinking about a question I get often. How did I start my photography business at age 12? For me, it all started with the Polaroid camera. And it wasn't one of those like cool retro film cameras. It was the marshmallow looking thing that all the teenage girls were obsessed with in middle school. This. When I was in sixth grade, I begged my parents to get me this thing just because it was a huge trend and I just wanted to jump on it. But we ended up taking a trip to Austin and that's where I kind of discovered this love for photographing things. While we were on our trip, I took pictures of like everything and anything you can imagine. Honestly, we, and when I say we, I mean my parents, must have spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars on this Polaroid film and I, with my abundant free time, spent hours and hours photographing literally everything I saw. I don't even know what this is. I... And then I remembered something. Before my parents had phones with cameras on them, they used to haul around this chunky DSLR whenever we were on vacation just to take pictures of us having fun wherever we were. By 2015 or 16, I hadn't seen that camera in a while, probably because my parents were thinking, oh, we have like decent quality cameras on our phones, like there's no need to carry around this chunky thing. But I was really interested in finding the camera and playing around with it, mostly because I was bored because it was summertime. My dad ended up finding it for me and I began to experiment. I took pictures of trees, clouds, the ground, my brother, myself, food, squirrels. I even took this camera to a violin summer camp that my friend and I went to and we had like all sorts of weird photo shoots around the campus we were at. Basically, I took pictures of like anything and everything you could think of. These photos were all like incredibly useless. They had no story, no context, and they were just bad. But what they come to represent is a kid with a lot of free time and a growing passion for photography. I don't know what we were thinking here. Eventually, I began to photograph more people. At first, it was just my friends and family, and I remember bringing this camera everywhere, and my friends would be so annoyed that whenever we'd hang out, the camera would come along. And some people will say, oh, it must be great to have a friend who's good at taking pictures. But funny enough, none of my close friends actually like taking pictures. Um, they didn't like it then and they still don't. But luckily they were kind enough to let me experiment on them whenever I got like new lenses or learn a new technique. Special thanks to Jamie for laying in the middle of her street so I could take these really, really awkward pictures of her. Love you, Jamie. I then converted my Finsta account, which is a spam account on Instagram, into a photography account. And that's kind of when people from school started to notice. I had a lot of people come to me asking to do photo shoots, and of course, I willingly did them. I remember meeting up with people on the weekends or after school and just kind of walking around their neighborhoods taking pictures. I then began to experiment with Lightroom and Photoshop. Keep in mind, this was like during the school year, so I wasn't struggling with school, but I was spending a lot of time on photography. My mom in particular was beginning to get really annoyed at this overwhelming hobby of mine and she told me that I needed to start charging. My response was no way, um, no one was going to take a 12 year old girl seriously enough to hire her and pay for her to take their photos. I mean like this is what I looked like. <laughs> and at the time I was actually really really shy, like the thought of me meeting with people and having to serve them in a satisfactory manner that scared the hell out of me. But the biggest thing I was actually worried about was what people at school would think of me. Like, not that they bully me, but I was sure that they would judge. Like, who is this 12 year old girl who thinks she's so good at photography and over there claiming that she's a professional and charging for photos and making money? But more and more people started coming for photo shoots and I was kind of getting overwhelmed. So I finally decided to charge for a shoot. And it wasn't the $50, $60 per hour like my parents had advised. I decided to charge $5 an hour. Yeah, and that was February 2017, and that's kind of what I considered the beginning of my business. And then it kind of took off from there. Kind of. I decided to create my website with Wix, and wow, I really sound like a Wix ad, but yeah, it was the free trial website from Wix, and for a while, no one booked me. I was a little frustrated, and I considered lowering my already really low prices, but eventually, I began to book clients. At first, it was my friends and family who felt obligated to pay me, 
But then it was friends of friends, and then families of friends and friends, and word of mouth kind of carried my name around the community. All the while, I was still learning and growing, trying to figure out my photography style, and kind of keeping my mind open. I then took a little break from everything, and I went to China for two months, and I actually took some of my favorite photographs to this day. And I did everything with this little DSLR, my grandpa's 10-year-old rebel. Um, that my dad pulled out of the closet the previous summer. A few days after we got back from China, I shot my first wedding, and it was actually a referral from a family friend. The wedding was supposed to take place in a property out in the country, but because of a sketchy weather report, um, they decided to move their wedding into the gym of a church. So yeah, my first wedding was shot in a gym. I was still really excited to be shooting it, despite its like lack of luxury details and whatnot. And that was kind of the day I decided that I wanted to shoot weddings. But then I was back to school, and it was that fall that I consider one of my busiest seasons yet. It was actually not that busy, but at the time it felt like it was really busy because I had gone from shooting zero clients at the beginning of that year to having like 40 sessions in three months. I remember a lot of girls in my grade wanted to do like best friend sessions, and then their families ended up hiring me for holiday card photos. Eventually I was shooting lots of families, lots of friends and friends of friends, and I was even shooting some events. It was it was pretty crazy for me and I felt pretty good because I was shooting a lot more than I had ever shot and I ended up purchasing new lenses, flashes, even a new camera body. The following year, I continued to grow my clientele. I started shooting senior sessions and I remember reaching out to hundreds of local photographers offering to second shoot their weddings for free. Eventually, I started booking my own weddings and I launched a senior spokesmodel team. I raised my prices and updated my website and then I began to feel burnt out. But I kept going. I had weddings to shoot, seniors to shoot, and then I started high school and I began to get busier and busier and stressed out and burnt out often. So I started to slow down a bit. I stopped shooting families altogether and I booked far less weddings than I had before. Busy seasons came and went, but I tried to leave some room for myself to pursue my other passions and just to breathe. And that somewhat brings me to where I am today. I've just entered my fourth year of business and I'm going to be entering my third year of high school in the fall. Over the past few years, I've learned a lot from running a photography business. And let me split that up into two parts, photography and business. On the photography side, I've gone through phases where I would just stand behind my camera and click away without thinking too much because after a while, I realized that I was repeating the same poses over and over again and same cheesy smiles. I realized that I kind of lost sight of what photography really is, capturing people in moments and evoking feeling and sentiment through photographs. And I'm still working on that. I mean, of course there are different situations for different photographs, but I want to create more photographs that look like this. They say that a photography business is 10% photography and 90% business, and that is really the case. Since that first day where I converted my Finsta spam account on Instagram to my photography account, I've learned a lot about how to take advantage of social media and market myself through blogging and my website, and how to effectively converse with people in professional settings, whether it be through email or in person. I've also somewhat grown out of my shell, even though I'm still extremely awkward in front of the camera. But yeah, the shy 12-year-old girl whose clients reluctantly hired her is a lot more confident in herself and her abilities now. Anyways, I really have no idea where I'm headed with my photography business or in life in general, but all I know right now is that I really love what I do and I can't wait to see what comes next. I actually originally had an outro video, but I decided it would probably be a better idea if I filmed one again because, you know, um, so I really hope you got something out of this. My socials are linked below along with my website. So let me know if you want more videos like this and um, thank you so much for watching.